Now is the time is the title of this joint presentation between Terre des Hommes and the International Bureau for Children's Rights. Um, as during armed conflict or natural disaster, the pandemic has really changed the relationship between justice systems and children. And the, um, the, the variations that we could see, for instance, is a, an increase in the number of cases of sexual violence, sexual abuse because of confinement. Uh, we saw also new rules and regulations such as a curfew, uh, um, social distancing, uh, rules in public transport that led children to interact in contact with, um, uh, with the law because of breaking some of those uh, in new regulation. Um, closure of schools have met more children idle in the street and possibly entering in conflict with the law as a result. Unemployment and social um, conditions have deteriorated for many families and some children have um, um, led up to uh, entering in more sort of pity crime or criminality or trying their best to help their family and also therefore leading to more interaction with the justice system. Um, greater presence of new technologies in daily life and many of those um, young children being introduced to those new technologies without the best conditions of having parental guidance uh, because of the pressure on um, uh, distance working and all of that have also led to um, some online criminality involving children on, in the, in, on the increase. Uh, detention facilities have also um, have been under pressure and some have released children in all forms of conditions, not always well coordinated and not always for the reasons for the best interest of the child. Security and justice personnel themselves have been affected with their health, so there's been a reduction of personnel in some instances, a reduction in services, while at the same time more demand for those services meant overall that cases involving children have often uh, encountered greater delays than before. Um, and talking about delays and postponement, um, uh, pending justice processes have left uh, many children in pre-trial detention, uh, affecting the treatment of their cases. But the pandemic has also offered various opportunities, so it's not just all negative. We've seen more openness from the justice and police uh, services to make greater use of diversion, alternative to detention, uh, early release, and so it has been quite positive to be able to uh, expedite or introduce reforms that have been long been wait waited for because of that new context. Um, there's been stronger debate and possibilities and political willingness to explore um, more uh, improvement on the justice system um, So, the, with all sorts of adjustments um, that are, um, for instance, uh, um, connected with new technology, di digitalization, and how to make best of the systems for children with children. Also connecting with more space for child participation in those transformation. So all of that to say, much um, changes taking place. What will we do for the long run with those changes? Cédric? Thank you, Guillaume, and uh, good morning to everybody as well. Um, so uh, um, indeed, to, to follow up with what you said, Guillaume, between uh, uh, Terre des Hommes and um, the pro bono department of Baker McKenzie, a law firm, an international law firm, uh, we decided to take the benefit of the uh, lockdown to work together on uh, some um, research regarding the detention of children in time of pandemic. Uh, and we certainly uh, wanted to focus on uh, practices all over the globe. So we produced um, a, a policy and practice brief, which has been released just before summer, uh, where we study the different international instruments regarding detention of children and the protection of children in time of um, um, in an adverse uh, period of time, in particular in time of uh, pandemic. Uh, and then uh, we study in a different region of the world, uh, in Africa, in the MENA region, in, uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, in Colombia, in um, Latin America, sorry. Uh, the different practices and all um, civil society and um, uh, public authorities have been working in uh, releasing, accelerating the release of children uh, in detention to, to protect them from uh, the pandemic. Um, but it was a first step, and just after that, we decided all together with other organizations like your one, Guillaume, 
and uh, other like Canary from International or the International Association of uh, Family Judges and Magistrates uh, to work on operational guidelines. Uh, the idea was to uh, give some tools to uh, professionals to help them to uh, um, uh, implement children's rights, uh, protect them, and uh, work with uh, the professionals uh, we are in contact with uh, children in conflict with the law on a daily basis, and particular um, police and security forces, um, then a social workforce, and of course all legal uh, professionals such as lawyers and uh, um, and uh, judges and magistrates. Thank you, Cedric. So basically, as my as my colleagues were um, were putting in the table. Um, we've seen all these experiences across the globe, from Ukraine uh, to Colombia, from uh, Jordan to Burkina Faso. And if we have all in mind the Standard 20, uh, Justice for Children, of the um, Child Protection Minimum Standards in Humanitarian Action, and we take a little bit the capitalization, the lessons learned, and also the challenges of the pandemic, we would like to discuss with you different questions that I'm sure that we all have in mind when we talk about justice for children in emergencies. How, for example, to in these rapid options or uh, non-custodial measures, diversion, alternative to detention, community-based, how to really ensure the very perspective of children, but not only children um, that are in conflict with the law, but also how we uh, put the focus on those that are child victims or witness and how we ensure that they can participate meaningfully. Or, for example, how to ensure reintegration options that are taking into account confidentiality, safety, but at the same time are rapid enough to be put in place in a crisis. Um, and then also how we shift attitudes, practice, habits, cultures of professionals that has been dealing with children in a way, and now they need to apply this crisis lens that we, that we know uh, into something that the justice system will be effective. And, and I think ultimately it's, it's also to, to, um, to speak together about what is justice for children systems resilience and what is justice user resilience, especially when we talk about children. So we hope to discuss with you all of these questions soon in the annual meeting. Thank you very much.